All right, so question eight on the 2018 VCAR exam, and it looks like we've got some um, electrochemistry here. Um, you can see, looks like a electrolytic cell here and a fuel cell, obviously we've got a fuel cell there as well. So let's have a look at what we're doing. Um, an energy company investigates the feasibility of supplying energy while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Solar panels collect energy from the sun and electrolyze water producing oxygen and hydrogen, and these are stored separately for use in a fuel cell. So this is a really lovely, um, obviously, renewable energy. Um, this is the setup here. You can see the fact that the stuff at um, electrode W then goes into the H. So at electrode W, we're producing hydrogen, and electrode, whatever this one is, is going to produce oxygen. Electrode Y is here, so that's pretty cool. So let's have a look at this. State the polarity of electrode W. So electrode W, what are we doing here? We are producing hydrogen. So what is that reaction? I'm going to go to my electrochemical series and have a look at what the production of hydrogen is. So it's going to be this guy here and it's going to be going forward. So what that is, is a reduction reaction. You can see the production of hydrogen here would be a reduction reaction. Even this production of hydrogen here is um, a reduction as well. So anytime you're producing hydrogen, we've got reduction. So that means that's the cathode. And in an electrolytic cell, that would make that the negative um, polarity, negative electrode. So therefore the cathode, which is negative because you're putting electricity in to our cat. Um, Fuel cell operates in alkaline environments. So write the half equation for the reaction that occurs at Y. So what's happening at Y? We have our oxygen reaction in our fuel cell. So therefore I'd go over here and take my fuel cell with oxygen. So I look for oxygen. We have this guy here. That would only occur in acidic environments, so I can't use that one. Oxygen here, also acidic environments, can't use that one oxygen here. So we're only taking this reaction here and that's going to be our answer for what's happening at electrode Y because that's the reaction when oxygen is being um, going to produce um, energy, I believe. Yeah. Let's move on. Um, so O2 gas plus 2H2O um, plus four electrons negative, and that's going to form four OH negative, and that's going to be aqueous, that's going to be liquid. Um, so therefore, we have our half equation. Again, why? Because I know that that is where oxygen is reacting, and I go straight to my electrochemical series, and I work out if oxygen reacts in an alkaline environment, I'm going to be using this particular equation. Can't use this one because it would be acidic. Let's move on to the next question. Next question is a calculation question. So each of the four solar panels produces an average current of this, operates over an eight hour period, the electrical energy generated by cell to produce there, blah, blah. Calculate the amount in mole of hydrogen. So because this is electrochemistry, I need to know the fact that, um, well, write out my equations. I know Q equals IT, um, and Q also equals number of moles of electrons times F. So therefore my number of moles of electrons equals, um, that's not right. Q equals, that's right, yeah. That's fair enough. Q over F. So therefore, let's have a look. My each of the four, so therefore each cell produces this many amps, operates there, so therefore my Q here is going to be equal to um, 4 times 5.2 for my ampage, then that's going to be times by 8 hours, 8 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. That's going to be a lot of electrical charge. So therefore I get my trusty calculator, turn it on somewhere, there it is, 4.5 sorry, four, four times 5.2 times by eight times by 60 times by 60 equals a relatively large number, 599040 coulombs. Then I know my number of moles of electrons is gonna be equal to Q over F. So therefore that equals 599040 divided by 96500. So I take that number 
and go divide by 96500. That gives me 6.2 moles of electrons. Now I then need to work out my number of moles of hydrogen gas and so therefore it's my ratio of electrons to hydrogen gas. My electrons are 2 to 1 so therefore hydrogen gas is going to be half as much as the electrons. So number of moles of hydrogen equals 6.2 divided by 2 equals 3.1 mole. Now I'm just going to double check that. That's divided by 2 is 3.103 so that's good. Um, looking for sig figs, I've got three sig figs here. I've got, um, yeah, so I might go to three sig figs. I might just go to equals 3.10 mole there. Um, so yeah, that's my answer to that one. That's how many mole. Again, finding, just writing down all my electrochemistry equations and then going through it, knowing that I'm going to end up with number of moles of electrons, which then need to be converted into number of moles of hydrogen. Let's move on. Uh, determine the pressure of this gas at standard laboratory conditions in a 10 litre tank. So what that means, I need to go PV equals NRT and I need to know P, which is going to be NRT divided by V. This is going to be standard conditions, so that means it's going to be 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so my number of moles is 3.1, my R is 8.31, uh, times by my temperature, which is 25 degrees plus 273 equals 298. That's going to be divided by 10 litres. So therefore, let's bang it into here. So again, take that number times by... 8.31 times by 298 equals that. Divide that by 10 gives me uh, 768.6 kilopascals. Um, which, if I look at sig figs again, let's go check that down to three sig figs. That's going to be uh, 769 kilopascals. And I think that's about right. I'm just wondering, is there anything I've done wrong there? I don't think so. Looks pretty good. Alrighty, let's move on to the last part of this question, question part C. A fuel cell produces this much energy when 20 moles of hydrogen is consumed. Another possible energy source for is fuel. Generator operates at efficiency of 35%. A particular petrodiesel container a range of pipe found to have a heat of that. For this formula, formula for this petrodiesel can be represented as um, C12H24 um, with the molar mass of that. So what I need to find out is calculate the mass of petrodiesel required to produce that much energy. All right. So if I want to produce that much energy, my heat of combustion is this. So therefore, I simply divide that by how many is per gram, so therefore my mass of petrodiesel equals 3553 divided by 45. So this is if it was going to be a hundred percent conversion. 3553, oops, clear. 3553 divided by 45 gives me 78.9 well 79 grams. Now that is only 35% of what actually would be required. So therefore, factoring in my 35%, I'll then say my mass of petrodiesel um, in total, and this is called 35%, it's going to be 79 divided by 0 0.35. So therefore, that will be equal to 0.35 uh, is 226 grams. Um, again, looking at my um, rounding here, obviously the fact that this would go up to yeah, 226. So that's how much petrol will be required. Calculate the mass of CO2 released when that much energy is produced. Well, let's have a look. My, I need to go CO2. Uh, it's a ratio of C12H24 to 24 CO2, so I, I can find my number of moles of my petrol, so my number of moles of my petrol 
will be equal to 226 divided by 168. So that divided by 168 gives me 1.34 mole of my petrol. Now, when I burn my petrol, all my carbon is going to be converted into carbon dioxide. So that's why it's a ratio, oh, not to 24, it's to 12. 12 CO2. So therefore, if I take that, my number of moles of CO2 will be equal to that times by 12 equals 1.34 times by 12 equals 16.11 mole. And I know mass, so my mass of CO2 equals number of moles times molar mass, which equals 16.11 times 44. This is something you should know. Um, carbon dioxide's molar mass is 44. Um, so that times by 44 gives me 709 grams. Again, what I'm doing, each time I'm doing a calculation, what you need to be aware of is the fact that you don't need to clear your calculator. You just keep, keep on adding to the calculation that you've actually done. Um, there, I don't write in this value again. I simply use the answer. As you can see, answer times what it actually is. So that's how much mass of carbon dioxide would be produced when I burn this stuff. Question uh, C3. How would the mass of carbon dioxide produced from the combustion of the petrol diesel compare to the CO2 produced by the fuel cell? All right, so what fuel cell did we use? Uh, we used a hydrogen fuel cell. So therefore, um, you should know that hydrogen fuel cells don't produce CO2, they produce water only. So a H fuel cell will not produce CO2. Um, so the um, petrodiesel will produce more CO2 than the fuel cell. Um, actually, 702, 709 grams more if you want to compare it because you can actually know that the fuel cell is not producing any. This is producing 709 grams, so therefore the um, petrodiesel is going to produce 709 grams more because, as I said here, fuel cells, well, hydrogen fuel cells don't produce carbon dioxide. And that's the end of that question.